I'm Joe Seabrooks, and welcome to Sensational News, where we celebrate the amazing students and programs at Dallas College, Cedar Valley Campus. Today, we are with the phenomenal, the amazing, the incredible students of Gillum Collegiate Academy. And I want to start by allowing you all to introduce yourselves. Tell us who you are and your academic plans. So uh, I'm Eddie Trevino. I am a senior at Kathleen Joy Gilliam Collegiate Academy. I plan on studying biology, uh, attending medical school, and becoming a radiologist. Fantastic. My name is Cheyenne Mays. I am a senior at Kathleen Joy Gilliam Collegiate Academy, and I plan on becoming a Navy SEAL. Oh, wow. A Navy SEAL. <laughs> yes, sir. My name is Daria Money. I'm a senior at Kathleen Joy Gilliam Collegiate Academy, and when I graduate, I want to study communication sciences and disorders so I can become a speech pathologist. Amazing. Hello, I am Jaden Cole. I'm a senior at Kathleen Joy Gillen Collegiate Academy, and I plan on going to college and studying biology to become an obstetrician and gynecologist. That's great. I am Wendy Ruiz. I am a senior at Kathleen Joy Gillen Collegiate Academy, and when I graduate, I want to major in international relations to become a diplomat. Fantastic. Well, you all incredible. Thank you all for being here today. Now, sir, tell us who you are. Yes, sir. Uh, I am Michael Edwards. I'm the 12th grade teacher there where I teach uh, creative writing, practical writing, as well as a program called AVID. Excellent, excellent. And then there's something special about you as relates to this program. Uh, you have a unique connection, right? Yes, sir. I'm actually a graduate of uh, Captain Joy Gilliam Collegiate Academy. So it's a very full circle moment for me to uh, become a graduate. Well, first be a graduate and now an uh, educator at the school. So you know all the tricks that they can Yeah, it can't, get, it can't get past me at all. Oh, uh, <laughs> great, great, great. Fantastic. Oh. Well, well, I really appreciate you, you being here, but let me let me ask you, Mr. Edwards. Yes, sir. People really don't know and understand this, mm -hmm. but Gillum Collegiate Academy is a blue ribbon yes. school. Yes. And basically what that means, ladies and gentlemen, that out of 325 schools in the country, 26 of those blue ribbon schools are here in Texas, mm -hmm. and four are here in the DFW. And Catherine Gilliam, for the second time, the second time, has been recognized as a blue ribbon school by the U.S. Department of Education. What does that mean as an administrator? Again, it's full circle moment. It feels it feels really good to know um, at a school where they are serving underprivileged uh, students, um, bridging that achievement gap. Uh, I'm proud of them. You know, it's, it's one thing to tell them, but it's another thing to actually see that not only we are acknowledging it, but you know, across the country, is being acknowledged. You know, especially for brown and black. Being acknowledged across the country. Yeah. What does it feel like to literally be recognized as one of the best college students in the world? For me, it's it's amazing. We're a, we're a really small school. It's about like a 400 of us, probably yeah. less. And it's great because for what we lack in people, we have in minds. It's amazing to see just like from my journey as a freshman, not knowing what I'm doing, to being recognized not once but two twice as a red. I mean, as a blue ribbon school. That's incredible. Your thoughts, Wendy? Like Daria said, we are a small school. When I was first going to Gilliam, and I told people that I was attending Gilliam, not everybody knew where Gilliam was or where or what it was. But now that we're a blue ribbon school. I feel like people are going to know us. Excellent, excellent. Uh, personally, for me, I am extremely proud to be part of the program. And the fact that we're in uh, a majorly minority school is like, it makes me so proud just because it's something different and we're getting recognized nationally, which is something that's really crazy. That's right. Changing the narrative. Yes. Sir. Yes. Just as my peers um, acknowledge, yes, we are a small school, but we do work hard. We have um, a great, we have, we just work hard and we work, make sure we work together. And it feels great to make, to know that, you know, we're recognized nationally. Many schools don't do this, especially in the um, Dallas Fort Worth area. It just feels good that we're noticed and noticed by many, many people across the country. So it feels great. That's fantastic. I feel that it's an honor that our school is, you know, being shown for this, our accomplishments, you know, and that's great. Yeah, that's a, that's great. I, I love that. We're so proud of you and so proud as Dallas College to be a part of your educational experience. But I got to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> COVID-19. Yes. Tell us how the pandemic has impacted your collegiate experience. 
Okay, I can. Um, I'm. I'm gonna go. Um, I know for me, COVID changed a lot as far as my mindset. It took a lot of discipline for me to make sure I get up on time, go to class on time, make sure I'm turning in my work and doing everything. But it also gave me a chance to really kind of see what college would be like in a way because we're not gonna have our parents there. We're we're not gonna have people there telling us what to do. But it gave me a chance to really better my skills and just make sure I'm just doing everything I need to do to make sure I turn in my work on time and just ensure that I'm going to get a good education during the pandemic. Great, great, great. Well, I went from being in a classroom with a teacher or a professor telling me what to do and when to do it to being at home and deciding when I want to do things and where I want to do things and if I want to do things. So uh, it really did make me into really autonomous person, but it really grew me as a, as a, as a student because now I'm really academically autonomous. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. When COVID started, we were high school sophomores. So most of our college career has been online. We had virtual classes. So we definitely miss out on that, but we still have experience with college and it was good. Yep. When Thank COVID you. started, I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was struggling. I was like missing class by like 30 minutes. I would be asleep. <laughs> I, I thought I set the alarm. What? Miss I Money was, was <laughs> Oh. Through it. And so just to have my peers kind of encourage me and say, hey, we all going through this. Like, you know, you're not by yourself. So just push through and we're all here and we all support each other. And that's what really got me through the whole virtual school. And I really appreciate it because it's made me become a stronger student. And I just don't know that if I if it would have been longer, how it would still be affecting us. So. Yeah. I feel that COVID just gave me the key qualities to set a plan and prioritize, you know. What should prioritize? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Extremely. Yeah. So, Mr. Edwards, from a from an administrative school leader standpoint, yes, sir. how have you all had to pivot uh, as we were coming out of the pandemic to meet our students' needs? Um, piggybacking off of Ms. Money, I would say it definitely made us stronger teachers, educators, um, coming from a platform like Zoom that's very impersonal. I feel like we just had to be more personal. We had to work harder. The work didn't stop. We just worked harder uh, on being personal with them and building that emotional intelligence and that relationship to where you're dealing with seniors, I mean, me specifically, who probably already have senioritis. <laughs> and so you add the COVID factor, they may not want to get up for school. So uh, it just made us be more creative and, and try to uh, persuade them and motivate them to want to learn for themselves. That's great. You know, but you know what? Here's, here's something that's interesting. There are actually two pandemics going on. There's COVID-19 pandemic, and then there's the workforce pandemic. Right. And, and I know that to be true because there's not a day that goes by if there's not a company or a business owner that is looking for talented people just like you. What, will you, what, do you, what should you tell or what do you need to tell the companies that are interested in, in you working for them? What's most important to you uh, for you to consider working for them? For me, I look for a space to grow. That's most important for me. If I can't grow in a space, then I feel like I'm not truly thriving. I don't like to be put into a box. I like to learn more things. I like to grow. I like to experience new things. And if I'm at a company and they just want me to stay at this one place and everything is already set in stone, I just know it's not for me. I know that how I am personally, I need to be able to grow or I won't thrive in the little box you put me in. That's, that's important. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Just feel that if I love that job and feel very comfortable, you know, have a passion to just grow as my peer said. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'm, I'm a already college student. I'm an 18 year old student. So right now my main focus in life is really my, my, my career and my academic goals. So what, I, if I were to get a part-time job, which I already have one, but if I was to get a different one, I really look into like a flexibility. So I would look into flexibility and how can they help me grow as a, as a student and how can they also help me grow as a teenager? Excellent. Excellent. And um, for me, passion is something that I want them to know that I have. Um, I come into this job knowing that I want to do this. I want to make um, make sure I'm happy in it, but I also want to help people. I'm going into the medical field, so I know I'm going to be working with people. I want you to know that, you know, I'm here to make a change in someone's life. And also, I want to grow my skills and better my skills as well. Fantastic. When looking for a job or an internship, I definitely look for a good leader or mentor because the leader does make the team. So if there's a good leader, I feel like I would work well. Well, I hope you find yourself working at Dallas College, <laughs> Cedar Valley. <laughs> See how I did that? Um, so let me shift gears. Oh, does anyone else want to share? 
Well, let me ask you, what, what do you think from an educator <clears throat> standpoint that it's important for them to be prepared uh, to make a transition in the workplace? Um, I think they really said it, honestly. I would say the, uh, the independence, independence. Uh, the growth, uh, the transparency, and also that passion. And like Wendy said, um, I'm paraphrasing, but the fish rots at the head. So if the leader is not, you know, doing what it needs to do, how do you expect your team to do Say it? Say that again. The fish rots at the fish rots, rots at the at head. The, head. the yes. fish rots at the head. Okay, that's excellent. I, I tell y'all are amazing. Let me, can I shift gears for a second? Let's talk about music. I remember very vividly being a high school singer, and I had a playlist, the things that I, songs I listen to every day uh, to keep me motivated moving forward. Tell us, what are the top songs <laughs> on your playlist and why? Um, I'm going to just say Michael Jackson, any song by Michael Jackson. For any me. song by Michael Jackson? <laughs> That's a lot of songs. Can you give us at least two or three? Um, I know for me, Human Nature. Human um, Nature? Yes. Um, Why you do me that way? <laughs> okay. Um, um, bad. And um, another part of me as well. Oh, my that. God. We call her Miss Jackson at school. Miss Jackson. <laughs> bad. Yes. Who's bad? Michael. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but Michael Jackson's songs have always um, just made me happy, especially kind of like really during the pandemic when we was at home and, you know, having to do that work. But it's always his music uplift me and always made me happy and almost always made me want to, OK, I need to do my work. Let me just turn on some Michael Jackson and everything will be OK. So my, that, any song by Michael Jackson, for sure. Is. That's right. So, Miss Cole, I can tell <laughs> you want to be starring some. <laughs> yes, I, I did that. So I did that. Who go next? Who go next? Um, I listen to a lot of different genres, whether it's R and B, country, hip hop. I'm kind of like well versed. I listen okay. to a lot, but lately I've been a little bit obsessed with the artist named Kevin Gates. And people don't expect that from me, but I genuinely love his music. And I went to his concert in September of last year, and it was great. Kevin Gates. All right. Oh, oh right now I'm listening to a lot of Tyler the Creator. I went to Tyler the Creator. Tyler the Creator. Yes. Okay, that's her last name <laughs> um, on a birth certificate. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yes, his songs. <laughs> I like New Magic Wand and Are We Still Friends? Are We Still Friends? And what was the first one? New Magic Wand. New Magic Wand by Tyler the Creator. Tyler the Creator. Okay. Well, I listen to all sorts of music, but lately I've really been getting into indie pop. Uh, now a lot of not, a lot of people aren't too familiar with it, but some of the biggest artists, uh, one of the biggest artists that I that I enjoy from that genre is uh, Vance Joy, Vance Joy. and uh, Riptide is one of the one of the songs that I that I've really been like bench hearing. Like I just can't stop listening to it just because it's so it makes me so happy and it just gives me like in a like in a movie mood. So it just gives me like want to be productive. Like it makes wow. me want to be productive. Yeah. Vance Joy Riptide. I'm gonna have to find that. I say honestly, it depends on what type of mood I'm in. So, but if I had to go with a favorite artist, I say Lil Baby. Lil Baby. Yeah. And, and your favorite song by Lil Baby? My favorite song is Humble. Okay, okay, got it. Humble. Yes, indeed. Excellent, excellent. I appreciate y'all indulging me in that. I'm gonna for sure have to get my music game on uh, up. So, so listen. Let's pause for a second. Uh, from a message from Dallas College, and we'll be right back. Meet the three generations of Leonard. You know how to do it. You do it okay. right. right. Yeah. Okay. You know I was in the war, but I never got a chance to go to college. And me either. I had kids young, and I had to work two jobs. TJ is the first in his family to go to college. Now that I'm going to Dallas College, I think it's time for me to man the grill. Uh, you that? <laughs> Good thing you're going to college. You, you got, got a lot to, to learn. learn. <laughs> Don't mind them, TJ. You'll be cooking up a new career in no time. Dallas College. <laughs> to learn more about Dallas College, click here. It's right there. It's a button. You just click it. Yeah, that's it. Click it. Well, welcome back to Sensational News, our video blog, where we celebrate all things excellent at the Dallas College Cedar Valley campus. Again, we are talking to the one and only students from Gilliam Collegiate Academy. Y'all have been a joy to visit with. But let me uh, ask you a question that may not be the most pleasant to talk about. Uh, tell us what are the pros and cons with being a Collegiate Academy student? So I think the biggest uh, pro to being a Collegiate Academy student is the time that you're saving. Uh, 
because I feel like it gives you an upper hand to have more mistakes and it just gives you like a bigger room to to for just for not only for improving but also to make mistakes. So I feel like that besides the time, uh, that that's that's probably the biggest biggest pro. And then when it comes to the cons, I feel like the time. So I feel like it's no, there's really hard, it's hard to debate that we don't have less time by being a collegiate uh, academy student just because we're taking college classes and high school classes. So it's really the the rigor of the classes are a lot is a lot different than regular high schools. But so we do have less time. And uh, obviously that that messes with our our fun and and our extracurricular activities. But besides that, so it, let me it's make sure I got, so let me make sure I got it. So so time is the pro and time is the con. So right. it's the pro because it's saving you time on a on the long run. Exactly. But it is it's a con because you're losing a lot of time having to focus and on your studies. Exactly. Yeah, I yes, got sir. you. Thank you. Uh, I say a pro is just getting that early start. Just to get my associate's degree, I say the experience part as well. You know, getting the experience of uh, that college experience. You know, and I say a con would be you know the sports, the sports part, and not being able to participate. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Thank you. For me, a big pro is just honestly being around an environment where I can grow faster than maybe others can, and I I find that it's a good place for me to be I find that sometimes being accelerated can push me to be better and that's what I really look for is always trying to figure out how can I grow and how can I be better and that's just the type of person I am and a con is the pressure so I feel like Dow the Dallas Independent School District and Dallas College are spending so much money on us and I just want to make sure I'm on my A game at all times I want to make sure I'm getting it done I want to make sure my grades are up to par because that's money being spent. That's a lot of money being spent that's not coming from me. So I want to make sure I'm doing my part as a student because this is a privilege. So I want to make sure I'm doing my part and that I'm able to make y'all proud. That's what matters absolutely, to me. Absolutely. But just know we're not spending money on you. We've invested money in you. I like that. Yes, I indeed. like that answer. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, ma'am. Um, with the profession I'm going in, um, I know in the medical field, it's going to take some time, a long time. So with taking these classes and doing it now, I'm saving some time as well. So that's a pro for me. And a con, I, I can agree with Daria, you know, the pressure of, okay, I need to make sure I'm doing this. I need to make sure I'm, I'm passing because if I go to college at a different campus, I'm going to be paying for that. And doing this for free is a great opportunity for me. So I guess the pressure would be a, a con for me. Excellent. Thank you. Like my peers said, time is both a pro and a con because when regular high school students go to college, they have two years to decide their major. If they can go undecided, they can take general classes. But we already have those two years, so we get less time to decide on the major. Excellent. I appreciate that. That is wonderful. So from your perspective, what do you think as you are recruiting students or students are considering uh, uh, an, an incredible Blue Ribbon program like uh, Gillum? What should they be thinking about or be prepared to do? I say they have to want it. You know, it's one thing to have your parents sign up for you or the teachers to try to help you, but yeah. if you don't really want it at the end of the day, it probably won't work for you. Okay. Got to want it. Got to want it. All right. So now I need your help. I have two teenagers in my house and, and they're wonderful young men. <laughs> so let's say that. But oftentimes I find myself overhearing conversations and I don't know what they're talking about. Can you help me? We like to call this segment Teen Talk. <laughs> Can you give me, an old guy, some advice and some, some key phrases uh, and language that can help me understand what, a, what the heck my kids are saying? So one term that I use quite often is it's giving. It's giving. It's giving. Like so, Thanksgiving? No. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> definitely not. Okay. <laughs> so when I say it's giving, that in short terms means it feels like so it, it's it giving like. lazy i feel like you're lazy or it's giving why you crazy. think i'm lazy <laughs> it was just an example <laughs> oh just an example okay okay it's giving so it it is it expresses the feeling in the moment yeah so if it's a, it's given joy yeah that's that's that how works. i feel in the moment it's given because y'all enjoy the work I need to work on it. Okay. Just a little bit, but you got it for the most part. Okay. That's that's so nice. <laughs> now, you know I'm not grading any of your papers, though, but, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Who'll go next? 
Um, okay, I don't really say this, but I hear a lot of my friends say it. Um, the word period at the end of their sentence. Period? Yes. They'll say, um, I don't know what they'll say, but I know they'll use that word quite often. And period means like end of story. That's that. That is that's it. It's a mic drop. It's an emphasis. Basically, yeah. We wait a minute. Period. So <laughs> wait a minute. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, but but is it the proper grammar to use an exclamation mark? Well, they put a T at the end of yeah, it. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> I think I understand. Okay. What else? Uh, no cap. No cap. As in, uh, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Okay, so if I'm not lying, I just said that's, that, that, that's not cap. No cap. <laughs> not cap, no cap. No cap. Okay, not kneecap, no cap. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, what else? Uh, when, when we make fun of each other, we say we're scoring. We're scoring. Yeah, I don't know how familiar people are with that. It's a really popular one. It's been around for a while. Okay. So I feel like that's a slang a lot of people know. But basically, yeah, when you... When you're making fun of somebody else, like you scoring, like oh, they're making fun of you, like yeah. Oh, okay, we scoring. Okay, that this is very helpful. Thank you. Anything else y'all want to add? Okay, good, 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 good. So let me ask just one last question, and honestly, this is the most important question to me personally to hear you respond to. Uh, understanding that uh, we all have a limited amount of time on this earth. Um, tell us what legacy would you like to leave? Um, uh, for me, I would say knowing that I made a change in somebody's life, it, um, like, you know, just making, you know, smiling at somebody or just saying, Hey, to somebody, you never know what people need that day. You never know what people are going through. So I want to know, I want to make sure that I'm, you know, being nice to people. So I just want people to remember me as, remember me as this nice person. Um, somebody that's just, you know, always had a happy personality and made a change in their lives. Excellent. Thank you. When I think about the legacy I want to leave, I always want people to think like, oh, my gosh, she always told me how she was feeling. She was always just 100 percent me. I was always just real with everybody. And I'm unapologetically me. I feel like if you know me, you know, like I'm just I'm straight to it. Let's get into it. Like just open and honest. And I want people to know that that's OK. It's OK to be you and not be upset about it and not apologize because at the end of the day, you got to walk in your shoes. Nobody else does. That's right. Thank you. Something that I want to leave is knowing that I helped someone because I try to help whenever I can. So knowing that I did help someone make a change in someone's life is great. That's excellent. 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 Uh, I really want to be able to be a mentor to to a lot of young young kids, especially males, just because when I was a young young kid i didn't have anyone to look up to and i didn't have anyone to to show me how to be a man or 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 show me or you know just someone i could talk to from a male perspective just because it's, it's never going to be the same to have someone who's a female to have somebody who's a male it's always going to be different it's a different relationship and it's a different dynamic so when i'm older i just want to be able to leave a legacy and other young men Excellent. and serve Thank as you. an example i appreciate it that. just knowing that i was the original you know i didn't have to change myself to be like another person I was just, I was just me, you know. Fantastic. That's what I would like to leave on this earth. Fantastic. I really appreciate that. You know, I have to say to you all, you are uh, unequivocally amazing. You are a joy uh, to engage with. You give me so much hope for the future, and I wish you all the best in all of your future endeavors. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for us. This for this episode of. Uh, sensational news where we celebrate all things amazing at the incredible Dallas College Cedar Valley campus. Thank you all for streaming this. We look very forward to seeing you too soon. And just remember our mascot at Cedar Valley, we're the suns because the sun will never, ever set on the possibilities. Take care. This is Marcus. He wants to become a teacher, so he's taking classes at Dallas College. And these are Marcus's parents. They are glad he's going to Dallas College. So what's the difference between attending a university or going to Dallas College? At Dallas College, you're enrolling in a career, not just a class. Translation, J-O-B. Now that's what I'm talking about. 
Dallas College, education that works. To get started on your own career, click here. Translation, J-O-B. Go ahead, click the link.